My dudes, what's going on? Welcome to World 2 5 Minutes or Less series, where we go through each world and explain the best way to tackle them for a smooth Eidolon experience. And yeah, I know, it might not be 5 minutes, but you know what? It's a cool series name, and since all of you guys in chat told me it wasn't 5 minutes, we're keeping the name. Anyways, let's get into it. So congrats, you're in World 2. What now? Before we do anything, we need to get our characters to our subclass, which is located at Desert Dudes. We want a specific subclass moving forward. So for your first three characters, you want a Bowman, Barbarian, and Shaman, because these focus on World 2 skills, which is Alchemy, Catching, and Fishing. Your next three characters can be Hunter, Squire, and Wizard, because those will all be used in World 3. If you manage to get the seventh character before World 3, you can go the secret class known as the Journeyman, Lord of the Peanuts. Since you got your Shaman, now let's talk about Alchemy. This part deserves a 30 minute video just to explain, but here's a quick rundown. Click on the cauldron, and then click on a character character to add them to the cauldron. This will start brewing liquids to upgrade the cauldron to unlock new bubbles. As long as the characters are assigned to the cauldron, they get XP. You have two types of bubbles, small passive bubbles and equipable big bubbles. You can only equip two at the time at the moment. Click on the big bubble and click on the character to the right that you want to assign the bubble to. Vials are alchemy buffs that you drop items in front of the cauldron to unlock. Super easy to level, get them to level four plus for your shaman's damage. After that, to make this entire process faster, look at the pay to win tab and spend money there. It's great to spend money on water upgrades here early, then cauldron ones later for luck and speed. Do not skip alchemy. This is 80% of your account's progression. Take the time and learn about the upgrades. Three bubbles that are going to be huge to upgrade is orange seven, which is FMJ, and green seven, which is Shackercy. This gives you a plethora of accuracy and defense. Unlock these ASAP. They're huge for beginning progression. And the first green bubble, known as Hammer Hammer, that lets you produce one extra item in the production tab. Also, in the liquid tab, there's an alchemy shop. Buying a couple of distilled waters a day will be super beneficial. At level 30, you get a second preset. I would suggest setting each character up with one skilling preset and one combat preset. Hybrid builds in this game are not viable. To make your life a dream, in the skilling build for Shaman, put your points into a talent called Bubble Breakthrough. When brewing on the Shaman, this talent increases the chances of a new bubble being unlocked. Catching is Bowman's specialty, and it's just like chopping and mining in World 1. Fishing is Barbarian's specialty, and similar, but produces four types of fish based on your skill efficiency, and the rods and lures you get equipped by clicking this tackle rack here. Also, different pawns have different percentages on collecting the fish that can be checked in the AFK info. Also, I'll have a link to a site to help you guys early game get some builds to allocate your points for combat and skilling. Now that we got that taken care of, we have a new mechanic known as Merits. Now, you may have seen and talked to this Chad known as Grassland Gary in World 1, the Task and Mara Shop NPC. There's one located in each town. We can finally discuss this stuff and it's super easy. You get achievements from different challenges from the task screen. Each world has a set of tasks to do to earn merits for their upgrades. In the very bottom right of the task menu is your dailies for your guilds. So do these and that will count towards your daily GP. The most important ones for world one are hemoglobin, at least one in boss keys, mini boss talents, and the rest in mob respawn and amrock armor. Amrock armor besides the helmet are one of the cheapest forms of defensive and progression, and hemoglobin helps tremendously with survivability without relying on food. Hemo is also required to progress in World 3 and sometimes the later half of World 2. World 2 mirror shop priority will be at least in the mini boss talents and boss gems, followed by mob respawn and obols. Ephon armor is optional going forward because you change to plat and dementia in World 3. And don't build gold armor because it doesn't upgrade into anything other than completing the one quest. Since you've been farming achievements, you're going to unlock recipes which are located in the top right to unlock tools and weapons first. Stay away from free gems until you have more than enough. Also, while you're at it, unlock Icing Iron Bites because this is going to be used for a boss quest. Now then, on to Obols. Throw this pickle at the cat and look at this menu. It is super late game, but now they start dropping so you can get them gains little by little here. Here's a biggie. Post Office. It has a quest which requires you to craft boxes under Anvil Tab 2 and then gives daily quests for each resource you've collected. You don't need to do them all. Each day, they will let you refresh them in three days if uncompleted. Spending your boxes is big, and I have a whole guide about it here. Going into too much detail for a video, supposed to be five minutes long. Arcade is not super important for count progression, but nice for free gems and candies, and you can spend your golden balls for upgrades on rotation. All right, see this guy? He's sorta new, and his name is Kilroy. Each week, you get a challenge to slap monsters to death and earn skulls. These skulls are spent in his little shop and is a major boost to a ton of stuff later. But for now, arcade balls, time candy, 
and dungeon dice are good to spend your skulls on until world three. Get at least one black pearl and one white pearl for looty for your hunter's damage now or later. Spend these per week because the reset happens each week, so you cannot stockpile these. Now that you're a little bit stronger, let's talk about mini bosses. Back in World 1, Baba Yaga spawns on the hour every hour, so make sure to go to the Birch Enclave to kill, which has a chance to drop a recipe. It's a really good ring, and it's called the Serrated Rex Ring, which is an upgrade from the Rex Ring that you can buy in the Party Dungeon Shop. This is better than the Steel Bands, and once you get a new upgrade, these have skill efficiency percent, so keep them for your skilling build. Also, you could farm Bob Yaga at the Coliseum, also drops the second best money card in the game. The other World 1 boss is in the secret side path from town, known as the Sewers. The monsters here are super strong early, so having good armor is a must. Kill the poops, kill the rats, and meet the big mess of a boss called Dr. Defragus. He drops a super good card with damage percent. Above him is an extra secret room. Drop the bolt cutters from green mushrooms, and you get another juicy card from Boops from AFK gains. On to World 2 bosses. Another two. Biggie Hours has a crafted item called Googly Eyes. A recipe dropped from Crab Cakes and the boss item is dropped here next to the Kahlo in the Mimic Hole. He's good for time candy and gems. The other one is King Doo and it is locked with the Doot Jad Eye recipe dropped by Sand Giants. And his portal is on the same map, the Sands of Time. You need one of each class, Archer, Warrior, and Mage to show up here at the same time, then talk to the statues, boss spawns, beat them, and you get gems, time candy, etc. Coliseum is located at Mimic Hole, and that's where you get another daily Coliseum ticket. But at the bottom of the map, there's a portal that will take you to Bandit Bob's Hideout which is where the World 2 Party Dungeon is located. I have a World 2 Dungeon God Guide for further explanation. Make sure to do the main story quest and optional quest for stamps, and don't forget to keep leveling those stamps up. Also, remember that marble NPC from World 1? Go to World 2 Shop and buy the Golden Sculptor Tool, and drop it at the NPC to make the statue turn into gold. This will make it so you can buy upgrades to make the statues account bound. One more thing for World 1. Make sure you go to the forest villa, pick up an item called the Tarantulite. It is a very good necklace for early game. So as you're progressing through World 2, your gear should look like this. Iron or plat helmet, Amarok chest, legs and feet, Tarantulite necklace, and the highest weapon with two serrated Rex rings. This is more than enough to get you to the World 3. Now continue your progress all the way to Efon and do the quest. This requires you to get ghosts to drop and unlock icing iron bites in the recipe unlock that I previously mentioned. Enter Efon's domain. Defeat the boss by slapping all of his hands and then punching him in the face. Collect the gem and return to town and hand it to the bird and congrats, you're in world three. There he goes, my dudes. That was world two in under uh, 10 minutes. I knew the title said five minutes, but let's be real. Nothing in Eilon can ever be explained in five minutes. This game is too complex, my dude. But you just wait. It gets even crazier in World 3. Exciting, isn't it? Jittering in my little boots just thinking about it. But remember, Eidolon is just like this video. It's a marathon, not a race. Don't get overwhelmed. It all connects like clockwork. Anyways, my dudes, hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like and sub and hit the bell for future notifications and comment down below. Tell me how you feel about this five minutes or less series. At this point, it's more of a meme. Tune in next time for our next Eidolon video. Stay safe, happy grinding, and peace out.